Before we proceed, any question on sampling? Ada lagi nak tanya pasal sampling? Proses method tu. Um, by the way, I've just seen one, uh, just seen one message, uh, one text message. Eh? Asking on, tak nak buka WhatsApp mana tu. Share. In this explore function, ID will be put on the back to list ke? Ni explore function. Oh, all variety will be. Okay, uh, so for explore function eh, uh, if you just want to seek for uh apa tu the mean the mean or the uh, the, uh, the the descriptive for the each variable then you just locate all the variables under dependent variable okay but in the case where we need to test for equality of variance because you want to test for differences uh differences uh, uh for example references in uh, achievement uh, based on either for male or female then only then you locate the variables so under factor Ha, itu untuk for the purpose of uh, getting the equality of variance. Ha, itu lain. Okay, but if you want to just uh, get the descriptive values, okay, description, if you want, uh, if you just want to describe uh, on your variable, then then just locate on, uh, locate all the variables under dependent box. Okay, dependent variable box. But if you study, okay, you want to, you want to compare, you, if you have a, a comparison objective, okay, then you need to insert the factor tu, the factor tu according to the group that you want to compare. Itu lain. Okay. Okay, so we are done. So this one done eh? Yes, Dr. Linearity done. So how to read this table? This is very easy. Okay, to read this, uh, sorry, to read this uh, graph, okay, as long as uh, your, uh, uh, your data ni located along the, along the straight line ni, so then we can assume that it is meeting, that they are meeting the assumption of linearity. Maksudnya, bila kita buat satu straight line tu, kita dapat that straight line. Okay, we get, we manage to get that straight line. So then we can say that, yes, our data meet the assumption of linearity. Okay, so to, because to, uh, to test, uh, to get the idea on either our data are linear or not, it is just based on this graph only. Okay, kita tengok graph ni je. So, kalau kita tengok, if let's say we see the, the tabulation of our data, it falls within the straight, it falls along the straight line, then we can say that our data meet the assumption of linearity. Okay. Uh, next one. Okay, so this is the assumption testing in parametric statistics. Parametric test, so means that the assumption necessary, eh? assumption, uh, necessary assumption for parametric test. So again, parametric test means that that statistic requires the data to be normal. Okay, parametric. Okay, so for example, the first one, one sample t-test, you need to make sure that your data are normal. Okay, so but there is no need for homogeneity of variance. Why? Why? Because we do, we just only have one sample. Because in our study, we have only one uh, one sample, so no need for us to have the uh, to test for homogeneity of variance and linearity. Okay, and then pet sample t test similar. Okay, we just need to test for the uh, uh, population normality. But this one, make sure you get the population normality according to the factor. Uh, this one is related to what our friend asked. Okay, if you want, for example, in uh, pet sample t-test, pet sample t-test ni means um, you have uh, the training, you conduct a training, you conduct a training, you collect a data before the training and after the training, for example. Okay, so the comparison is before and after. So the, 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 the population that you use are similar, similar percent, so no need for you to know the variance of the group. So but you all guna orang yang sama because you use similar respondent. So no need for you to test on the differences, okay? 
uh, but in terms of the, the, the data normality ni, you need to test on before and after. Okay, this one kena ada. Next one is independent sample t-test. Okay, for independent sample t-test, for example, you want to compare the achievement of ERS 5951 uh, uh, between male and female. Okay, because you have two independent group, male and female. Okay, so that's why you need to have, you need to test on the homogeneity of variance. Okay, next one is ANOVA, one-way ANOVA. Okay, you need to get the normality. You need to test for the normality and homogeneity of variance. Two-way ANOVA or simple factorial, factorial ANOVA. Okay, or factorial ANOVA. Okay, you need to test for the normality and homogeneity of variance. Bivariate correlation, you need to get on the normality but not on uh, homogeneity of variance because the purpose is not for comparing but you want to know the relationship. So then you need to test on the linearity of the relationship between the IV and DV. Okay, so by variety means that you have two variables in your study. Okay, and then next one is simple or multiple linear regression. You need to test on the normality uh, and then uh, homogeneity of variance and then linearity. Okay, and then one way ANOVA. One, sorry, one way, uh, one way analysis of covariance, ANCOVA. Okay, so you need to test on the normality and linearity. Factor analysis, normality and linearity. And same goes to MANOVA, multi multivariate analysis of variance. Okay. Okay, so this is uh, the non-parametric uh, equivalent test of the parametric, tra uh, parametric test. As you know, means that we have a parametric uh, and parametric and non-parametric test that can give you similar uh, similar result, similar finding, comparable finding, can similar comparable finding according to the uh, your objective. Okay, so for example, uh, if you are interested to use independent sample test at the first place, but after you figure out your data are not uh, are not normal, then you can use Man Whitney U test. Okay, for pet sample t test. Okay, and then you can use you also can use Magnema sign and real Watson test. Okay, one way ANOVA, you can use uh, Kruskal Wallis. Okay, and then two way ANOVA, you can use Friedman and Cochrane test. Okay, for Pearson product moment correlation, you can use chi square test of independent. Okay, you can use like uh, chi square, or uh, Spearman rank order, or Kramer's V. Okay, but for simple linear regression or uh, multiple linear regression, you can also use simple logistic regression or multiple uh, multiple logistic regression. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so this one. So this is uh, the process line. Eh? So you run the EDA. Okay. Either your data, uh, your, either your data made the assumption of normal. Either your data made the assumption or not. Okay. If your data made the assumption, then you can proceed with the parametric test. Okay. If your data are not not meeting the uh, assumption, exam the required assumption, then you can carry out appropriate transformation. I thought we can dis uh, we will discuss this later. Okay. How to carry on appropriate transformation. If the transformation is successful, then you can proceed with parametric. Okay, if the transformation is successful, then you can proceed with parametric. But if after the transformation it is unsuccessful, then you have to use the non-parametric. Uh, so kita ada kat sini transformation ni. But transformation in this is this is not similar as tra data transformation eh. This different thing. Okay. Next one. Okay. So this is how to do the data transformation in your uh, in your uh, apa tu in your uh, SPSS. Okay. I give you some time to open your data set. <clears throat> then please let me know, uh, please let me know if you are done if you done open your data set <clears throat> Okay. 
Okay, so the data transmo uh, data transformation ni is uh, is the alternative uh, is the alternative way is the alternative option. Okay, if you still if you actually want to use the parametric test, but at the first phase after the EDA, your data do not meet that assumption. So we have uh, this step first before you can uh, proceed directly proceed or you have to proceed with a non parametric test. So we have this option. Okay, so if you done. Okay, you click analyze, click descriptive statistic. Okay, analyze descriptive uh, statistic and then click explore. Analyze descriptive statistic, click explore. Okay, and then after the explore box comes uh, comes out. Okay, then you locate your uh, first locate the, uh, your uh, variable on under the dependent list. For example, PB mean. Okay, locate your variable PB mean. For example, under the dependent list. And then for the factor, okay, you locate gender. Okay, locate gender. Next, click plots. Okay, click plots. Okay, and then you tick for factor levels together. For descriptive, you just, uh, this one, you, you, you actually can just ignore lah, this one. Make sure you tick for normality plots with test. Okay, then after you click this one, then you tick for power estimation. Click for power estimation. Okay, and then click continue. Okay, so uh, you all dapat tak uh, the spread and level plot of PB mini? Did you get this one? Dapat tak? Keluar lagi. Dapat, Doktor. Uh, okay, so from this plot, refer to this one. Sekejap, mana tak keluar saya punya box ni. Refer to this one. Slope equals to 8.261. Power for transformation equals to negative 7.261. Okay. Okay, so basically the equation for power estimation is power equals to 1 minus slope. And ini dia punya equation. To get this power ni, okay, to get this power ni equals to 1 minus slope. 1 minus this one. Okay, 1 minus uh, 8 point, uh, 1 minus 8.261. So, equals to negative 7.261. Okay. Got it? Uh, ni, dia punya ni. Okay, so based on that one, we need to check on which transformation strategy is required based on that power. Okay, the one that we have just now is negative 7. Okay, so negative 7, there is no negative 7 here, but we can use this one. Okay. So negative 1, the expression is, ni, one, 1 divided by x, so the transformation required is reciprocal. Okay, so means the description is the reciprocal of each data values is calculated. Okay, so to run this one, then, okay, and then you go to be, when you do your transformation, you go again to your data set, okay, and then under this one, you under this section, okay, under that tadi. Okay, so you repeat the same step. Okay, repeat the same step as just now. Analyze this descript, uh, descriptive statistic and click explore. Okay, so after appear this box, then you click plots. Okay, for under the plot, say you click, you tick for transform. Okay, tick for transform. Okay, tick here. Okay, then under the power, choose for reciprocal. Ada tak reciprocal? Ada. Ada. Uh, choose that one. Okay. Then after that, after you use that one, it can, it will come up with, it will come with a new data. 
Sekejap eh. Saya buat yang saya punya pula. Saya nak buka data dulu. Okay, for example, analyze, descriptive, explore. Okay, so under this one, locate the PB mean. Lah, saya punya PB mean pula tak ada lagi. Apa je lah. Tak eh? Kena, kena compute kejap. Analyze, descriptive, statistic and explore and then locate your dependent variable or any variable that you want to test on under the dependent list and locate your factor that you want to compare. Okay, for example, gender, male and female under the plots. First, take this one and then click transform and then click reciprocal. Okay, and then click continue and then click OK. So now they will it will propose a new data set after certain adjustment has been done on your data set. Okay. Based on this one. Okay. After the adjustment has been done, then you need to rerun your EDA. Okay. After this one has been done, then you need to rerun your EDA. Okay. This is the purpose of the data transformation. Based on power. Okay, clear eh? Nanti start boleh pakai lah this one. Kalau let's see data tak normal. Okay. So, ni dah settle. Okay, so there are a few more uh, exp um, few more the ladder of power here. Okay, we have cube, square, no change of raw data. Square, square root, log, log, reciprocal of the square root and reciprocal. Okay, so you may consider this uh, transformation power if you have uh, data, data uh, if your data are not normal or do not meet the assumption of equality of variance. Okay. Okay, so this one, the types of courtesies. Okay, just the type of courtesies. We have three types. If you, if you still can recall, we have the mesocortic, leptocortic and platycortic. So mesocortic is the uh, uh, is the uh, is the uh, normal data, okay. Leptocortic is the most peak one, okay. Data with with uh, the highest peakness, okay. And then platycortic is uh, is the most plain one, okay. Then that's it for EDA. So any question for EDA so far? So far so good. So far so good. That's enough too. Okay, so this week we proceed with univariate descriptive analysis. Okay. Univariate descriptive analysis. Okay, so this is the LO. Okay, at the end of the session, students are able to uh, uh, determine the type of descriptive analysis. Okay, determine the type of descriptive data and then graphic graphicking of the descriptive data by using graph chart or frequency table. Okay, so there are basically there are three types of uh, univariate descriptive statistics analysis, but we will uh, look at one by one. Okay, so but before that, eh, before we proceed to univariate, so let me introduce you. Okay, if we determine the type of analysis according to the number of variable we have in our study, uh, 
okay, we can divide it in uh, in three categories. The first one is univariate, which is the analysis that involve only one variable. Okay, univariate in the, the analysis that involve only one variable. The second one is bivariate. Okay, bivariate, which is the analysis that involve two variables, and then uh, multivariate, which is the analysis that involve more than two variables. So we have three: univariate, bivariate, and multivariate. Okay, so the relationship between univariate, multivariate, and bivariate, uh, bivariate and multivariate is if okay, if the univariate and bivariate normality is satisfied, then it is more uh, likely that multivariate normality is likely to satisfy. Means that okay, if we determine, uh, we, if we confirm okay, the, the normality of individual variable. Okay, then after we run for the higher level of analysis, it mostly been confirmed that our data are normal. But it is not 100%, but it is most likely. Okay, kalau data kita dekat univariate ni dah normal, biasanya bila kita proceed with bivariate or multivariate analysis, there is higher tendency for our data to be normal. Okay, then... Univariate analysis involves getting to know data intimately by examining variables precisely and in detail. So univariate means that we highlight on only one variable. Okay. Meanwhile, bivariate analysis involves looking at associations between pairs of variables and trying to understand how those associations work. Okay. And then lastly, the multivariate analysis involves Okay, the understanding the effect of more than one independent rival at a time on a dependent rival. Okay, so this definition given by Burnett 2000. Okay, so another definition, okay, for univariate ni, given by uh, Baby and uh, Trochim. Okay, Baby and Trochim, in which they indicate that univariate ni is defined as analysis carried out on only one univariable or variate to summarize or describe the variable, okay? And then univariate analysis refers to statistical analysis that involve only one dependent variable. If you aware, the definition, the, this definition eh, given by Baby and uh, Trochim is quite, uh, it is similar with the, the, uh, the definition given by the earlier scholar that I've shared just now, okay? Dia sama macam ni, okay? By Bernard ni, similar dia kata univariate ni involve the analysis of one variable which is just to describe. But according to according to Tabani, uh, Tabani and Fidel, okay, the univariate analysis refers to statistical analysis that involve only one dependent variable. So in which Tabani and Fidel highlight, uh, highlight that univariate analysis ni in include any analysis that involve only one dependent variable. Nah, dia beza sikit dengan hak ni. Okay, this one only one variable. But do not specific on which type of variable. But according to Tabani and Fidel, okay, the one variable ni referring to dependent variable. So it's, it may include, it may, see, it may uh, apa tu, consider that uh, Correlation also considered to be univariate. Ha, itu maksud dia. Because as long as you have one uh, DV, regardless of the number of IV, then it considered to be univariate. Okay, but for the purpose of our class, I want to use this definition. Okay, saya so tak nak pakai hak ni. Cuma saya nak cakap because when you uh, when you do your searching letter, probably, okay, probably, you will you might you will be confused which one to be univariate okay because there are certain uh, scholars that may say that uh, correlation considered to be univariate okay uh, and then uh, one way uh, apa tu a uh, uh, test considered to be univariate okay so for this class saya nak pakai the first definition maksudnya so, yeah, for univariate ni it's referring to analysis that just describe the variable describe one variable not limited to only one dependent variable. Okay. Okay, so univariate analysis, which is the simplest form of quantitative analysis in which the analysis of a single variable for the purpose of description. Okay, the main purpose is you want to, we want to describe the variable. Okay, and then it does not deal with causes or relationship. 
when I say that it does not uh, involve the uh, causes and relationship, it means that there is no hypothesis testing. There is no hypothesis testing for univariate because the main purpose is we want to describe. Okay, so univariate data use central tendency, which include mean, mode, and medium. Medium, eh? Bukan media ni. Salah. Okay, it's used dispersion method like range, variance, max, mean, quartile, standard deviation. And then also the frequency distribution. Is uh, The result we show in either bar graph, histogram, pie chart, line graph, box and whisper plot. So you can report or present your data according to this style. Okay. Okay, so it is commonly used to screen data and evaluate whether data meets required assumptions or criteria for other more complex statistical analysis. Okay, so as I uh, said, okay, there are three main types, which is frequency, measure of central tendency, and measure of dispersion. So this one, uh, saya akan go quickly lah, laju sikit lah. Okay, sebab kita dah biasa dah ni. So frequency distribution, MCT, and so on. So frequency, this is the example. Okay, you can either calculate the, uh, the number of uh, event occurred. Okay, and then you can calculate the relative frequency and then percentage. Just to let you know, when you report your data according to APA style, okay, again, eh, when you want to report your table, if you want to report your, uh, if, if you want to report your data using table, this is, uh, please follow the seven APA style in terms of reporting. Saya tak update lagi ni lecture saya ni untuk seven. The latest one is the seven. But my, uh, my, uh, my lecture is still based on the SIG APA style. Okay, according to the SIG APA style, if you want to report your data by using the table, okay, if you have the frequency, okay, you, you have option. Either you want to spell out a spell full version of this frequency or just use F. But do not use both. Okay, you may choose either one. Either you want, you all nak guna frequency, ejaan frequency penuh or the symbol frequency which is F. Italic F. Okay, but do not use both. Same goes to percentage. You can, uh, you can use percentage in whole spelling or you can use the symbol of percentage. Okay, in terms of drawing your table, okay, you should have the first line on the top. Okay, and then the second line that divide between your heading and the data and the last one at the end of your data. So you have three lines. Okay, this is the uh, SIG APA style of reporting your finding. Okay, so for, uh, frequency distributions are often presented visually in the form of a bar chart, histogram, histogram or stem and leaf display or table. Okay, so depends on your preference. Any questions so far? Reporting, uh, reporting is just not you manage to report the correct data, but it is also depending on the style of reporting. Okay, bila kita buat research, you need to make sure that you report the correct data and at the same time, you, you follow the correct format. Okay, so next one is MCT. So, Statistical model that provide information about typical representative or average score in a distribution. Okay, so it is uh, it is about it, it is describe the location of your data in which either it is located at the central or not. Okay, so the most frequency are uh, frequently used are mean, median, and mode. Okay, so mode referring to the value that occur the most in your data set. Okay, median referring to the middle value in a distribution. Okay, or the, the 15th percentile of the distribution. Okay, and then the mean is referring to the average of all of the values in a data set, which is calculated by summing the values and dividing by the number of observations. So the, mo the mean is the most frequently reported measure of MCT. Okay, so uh, in general, so these three are the most uh, frequently used, but among these three, the most, uh, the most frequent Okay, is mean. Okay, so there are times when one measure of MCT is preferred over others. Okay, which is mean is particularly affected by outliers. So, mean, mean is easily been affected by outliers. So, 
whereas the median is not. So probably where you, if your data do not meet the assumption of normality due to the existence of outliers, then you may you may prefer to use to report the median instead of the mean. Okay, and then the median is preferred over the mean in instances where the data is not normally distributed, where there are outliers, when there are unknown or missing data points, or where the data is measured on an ordinal scale. Okay, so the mode is preferred when data are measured on nominal scale. So this one clear, eh? Okay, many easily affected by outlier. So if your data are not normal, then you may consider to report the median instead of mean. Okay. Next one. Okay, so the next one is the measure of dispersion. So they, uh, it uh, it describes the uh, data spreadness or dispersion around the central tendency. So the another term is dispersion. Uh, another term of dispersion is variability. Okay. So the variability, uh, the dispersion involved the uh, involve three statistics: range, uh, variance, and standard deviation. So range is the difference between the larger score and the smaller score in a distribution. Okay, and then uh, variance refer to the uh, the spread of data around the mean value. Okay, ni boleh laju lah. Okay, so this is question. So this one standard deviation. So among all the measure of dispersion, standard deviation is what is the most uh, reported one. Okay. Uh, so we lah. Okay. So these are the example, the other type of univariate statistic. Okay. These are the another a, a few more types of univariate statistic. Okay. Central tendency, variance, distribution, plots, frequencies, plots, and so on. Okay, so far, any question? Okay. Next one. Masuk topik baru. Start panah hijin. Okay. So next topic is on the comparison analysis. Okay. So this is the LO. Okay. At the end of the session, students should be able to de uh, define the type of parametric statistic for comparing mean. Okay. The statistical assumption uh, required for comparing mean statistic. Analyze and interpret t-test and one-way ANOVA. Report result based on APA style. Okay, just a reminder again, eh, my lecture note is still based on the six APA style. I'm not yet uh, a man uh, improved according to the seven APA style. Tak baca lagi seven APA style macam mana. Okay, so the first one is t-test. There are three type of t-test. Okay, this is uh, to refresh. Uh, apa tu, uh, the lesson by uh, by Prof. Bahaman. I hope uh, I, I thought that you attend the class with Prof. Bahaman. So there are three types of t-test. One sample t-test, pet sample, pet sample t-test, or dependent sample t-test, and independent sample t-test. So three types. Okay, so why we want to use t-test? Because we want to compare the differences between sample mean and a test value. Okay, we want to compare mean differences between pet observation. Okay, to compare differences between two independent group means. Okay. Okay, so we we use one sample t-test if you if uh apa tu, to compare the, uh, the data that we obtain from our sample with the test value. Okay, we compare the uh, the data that we obtain from our data set to the test value. Okay, in which our study just involve, just include one sample. Okay, next one is independent sample t-test. Okay, for independent sample t-test, we compare, we have two groups and then we compare the data set between the two groups. Okay, and next one, pet sample t-test. Okay, for pet sample t-test, we use similar sample from for pre and post. 
Okay, pre and post. For example, we conduct one training. We collect the data before uh, before we conduct the training. Okay, then after we uh, we conduct the training, then we give the questionnaire again. Then after that, we compare the result. That one, back sample detest. Okay, ni boleh laju lah. Okay. So the, uh, the purpose of one sample t-test is we want to compare the sample mean against a test value. Okay, means that the single sample t-test compares the mean of a single sample to a known population mean. Okay, for example, you compare the current year's temperature to a historical average to determine if global warming is occurring. Okay, another example is you conduct a study to determine the, uh, the level of performance of employee within your organization. Then you get the value and then this value you compare with the historical data or archive data from your from your organizational re, uh, record. Okay, so maksudnya kita compare data yang kita ada, kita yang kita dapat dengan yang dah ada. Okay, itu maksudnya one sample t-test. For the requirement to run the one sample t-test is your DB must be interval or ratio. Okay, your dependent variable must be interval or ratio. And then the uh, same goes to the test value. Okay, so the DV name means that the value that you obtain from your variable. Okay, and then the test value need the historical data. So both must be interval or ratio scale of measurement. Okay, clear? Clear? Ke tengah fikir nak buka puasa dengan apa? Clear, Doctor. Alamak, diam dia semua. Okay, so the assumption is the score of the DV must be normally distributed. Okay, so the DV ni, your data ni must be normally distributed. Okay, the scale of measurement should be interval or ratio. And then, the random sample must be obtained from your population. Uh, so this is the one of the assumption. By the way, how can we measure either the data are random, randomized or not? How? How can we know that the data has been, has gone through the process of randomization? How? Any idea? Reliability test. Apa dia? Equality of value. Equality of variance to test on either the variance equally being distributed between the groups. But this one, how can we check the data has be has gone through the randomization? For example, lah, okay. For example, Adi Adi is my uh, the the reviewer. Okay, and then I'm the student, and I submit my uh, my my thesis to you. And how you how how can you know that my data has has gone through the randomization? How? Sampling frame? Huh? Sampling frame. No, no, this is based on the data only. How can we check? There is no way to check. <laughs> there is no way to check. Okay? It's not okay, Doctor. Ingatkan ada syara. Ada. Okay, there is no way to check. Walaupun even though you stated that there is, there is, it is there in your sampling method or sampling frame, but there is no other method to double check either it is, has gone through the randomization or not. No. It just solely depend on the integrity of the researcher. Because in research, there are something, there are certain part that we can control, that, but there are a few parts that we cannot control. So among others that we cannot control is this one. Okay, we cannot double check. We can't do the double checking. Okay, so it depends solely on researchers' integrity. Okay. Okay, so this one assumption of normality. So by the way, uh, to uh, there are a few ways eh, to determine the normality. Ni. Assumption of normality. I thought we already discussed on this one. Okay. Should be no problem lah. Okay, so for t-test uh, uh, analysis, SPSS does not provide option for a one-tail hypothesis test. So means that you need to divide lah. 
Okay, the analysis tu you need to divide by two. Okay, for the two, uh, for the two, uh, for the two tail test, simply compare the given significant t to tail against alpha to make your decision. But if you have uh, <coughs> the non-directional uh, hypothesis, then you need to, you need to further elaborate lah, further do the analysis manually. Okay, and then for a one tail test, divide the a given significant t divide by 2 and compare this value against alpha. Okay? Kalau untuk one one uh, one tail. One tail means that your hypothesis is direct non-directional. Okay, you do not indicate specifically the direction of your hypothesis. Okay. So interval uh, confidence interval, okay, can, can also be used to test the hypothesis. Okay, other than using the chromba alpha, you can also use the confidence interval. Okay, as the option to determine or to test the hypothesis. The calculation is based on the mean difference, okay, critical, critical T and standard error. So the estimated range of values which is likely to include an unknown population parameter calculated from this equation. Okay, but no, not, no need for you to worry because we do not use the manual calculation. Okay, kita tak guna manual calculation. Okay, so this is the decision criteria lah. So because uh, in your table of output nanti, the, 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 apa tu, the result of confidence interval ni will be located on your right side next to the significant value. So to make the decision based on confidence interval, simply look, uh, simply refer to the location of zero. If the zero located between, uh, within, within the confidence interval means that we fail to reject hash naught. Okay, we fail to reject hash naught. And then if the zero located outside the confidence interval, therefore we reject hash naught. Okay, probably you still cannot imagine but no need to worry. I will show you the example later. Okay, next one, effect size. Okay, so the effect size uh, by Cohen's D referring to the degree that the mean scores of the test variable differ from the test value in standard deviation unit. So if at size, it takes the unit in standard deviation. Okay, so if D equals to zero, the mean of the score is equal to the test value. Okay, and then D ranges from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, negative infinity to, so means that D ni can take any values. Okay, so D values of 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 represent small medium and large effect size respectively. So for example, you get the effect size negative 8. So what does it mean? For example, you have the effect size of negative 8. So what does it mean? Still? Large effect size. Okay, large effect size. Regardless of the symbol, either negative or positive. Okay, it just solely depends on the value itself. Okay, next. Okay. Okay, so how, what you need to know is how to run the analysis in SKSS, identify the required statistics, report the alpha, and then make decision and present. Okay, and then lastly, interpret and report. Okay, so this is what you need to know lah for this uh, ERS5951. Five, uh, okay. Then you need to report the confidence interval or effect size as the as an option or alternative to uh, significant value. Okay, to so run the analysis in SPSS for one sample t-test. Okay, for example, eh, you click analyze, click compare mean, and click one sample t-test. Okay, analyze, compare mean, one sample t-test. You want to do it or you just uh, uh, let, uh, apa tu, let, uh, let uh, you want to do it later? Do it now lah, doctor. Ah. Okay. okay, so then saya tunggu. Click analyze, click compare means and click one sample t-test. Okay. Okay. Okay, then after the one sample t-test box appear and then you locate PB mean under the test variable. Under the test variable, you locate the PB mean. Okay, so the test value here, okay, as what I told you just now, eh, for one sample t test, we only have one data in our set or in our data set. Tak ada satu data sahaja. But now we want to compare with another data that is 
that is that has been published elsewhere. Data lagi satu ni dah ada. So kita nak compare sahaja yang data yang kita ada dengan yang data yang dah ada. So the test value ni is the value that you obtain from the historical data. Okay, this is not the value that you obtain from your study. This one ni. Okay, the test value here ni, the data that you that you obtain from existing data set. Okay, your data yet to be analyzed. Faham eh? Clear? Okay. Yeah. So then, okay, then just click okay. Senang je. Ini senang je. Okay, so you, uh, did you get the same, the same result? Yes, doctor. Ah, okay, so yes, you, doctor. Uh, so then you have, uh, you have two table, one sample statistic that summarize, uh, uh, apa tu, the MCT and MT of your data mean and standard deviation and then another one is the find uh, the data for one sample test okay so based on the data you have the t value okay the degree of freedom okay and then the significant uh, the significant to tail the significant result that we want to report okay the mean difference and confidence interval so this is the one that i i'm i i said just now ci confidence interval okay Okay, T. Okay, uh, just asking. Eh? What is what? Uh, just try. Uh, just try. Uh, just want to help you to recall. What is DF? Degree of freedom. How we obtain this one? Saja nak tanya. What is degree of freedom? Ah, huh? n minus one. So what does it mean? What what you can interpret from n minus one? N minus 2 ah, Azmina kata N minus 2 Which one? For one N sample test It is one N minus 1 Okay N minus 1 one variable. Uh, So degree of freedom ni referring to huh. Freedom of Make decision Freedom of making decision for example, you if you have five scarf, five scarf to wear on different days in a week. For example, you have green, blue, uh, green, blue, uh, yellow, red, and grey. For example, you have five different scarf. Okay, on uh, on when uh, on uh, on Monday, you have four, uh, you have five options, right? To wear which scarf? On Tuesday, you have another four options. Another uh, on uh, uh, up to Wednesday you have three options. On Thursday you have two options. On uh, on Friday, how many options you have? No option. One option means that no option. You have to choose that one. Okay, so it means that the freedom of making decision you only have n minus one. So kalau tadi, for example. 5 minus 1 if equals to 4. Okay? Clear eh? Okay, so... Baru ingat. Ah, uh, tu, tu kata untuk report je. You all tahu dah. <laughs> okay, and then you set the alpha value. Okay, so in social science, again, there are only two options. Either you want to use 0 0.05 or 0 0.01. Okay, it depends on you as researcher that which one that you want to set. Okay, but as for the purpose of our exam, if there is nothing indicated, then it means that it is referring to 0 0.05. Okay, if nothing indicated in the question, then you use the 0 0.05. Okay, so to report the table, so this is uh, the way to report your one wave uh, sample, one, one, one sample t test result. Okay, in which and uh, on your heading, on your title of the table, you need to indicate the test score. Okay, so the test score and then the variable, which is, for example, the achievement number, but the one that we know, we use is PB mean. Ini lain sikit lah eh. Okay, and then N, the sample, number of sample, mean, standard deviation, T and P. Okay, so this is that what you need to report. Okay. And then in terms of making decision, okay, to make your decision, simply refer to P and 
significant fee. Okay, to make your decision, refer to T and significant P. Okay, to make decision, we use P. Okay, to make the decision either we want to reject or not to reject the null hypothesis, we use the P. But in terms of reporting, for the purpose of reporting, make sure you report both T and P. Okay. To make decision, it is based on p-value. But for the purpose of reporting, make sure you report both t and p. You must datang sekali dalam reporting. Okay. So, the decision, uh, to, uh, the, uh, the, to make decision, please refer to this table. Okay. If the significant value lesser or, lesser or equals to alpha, therefore we reject the Null hypothesis. Okay, and then if we if the significant value larger than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. But according to the result, the the significant value lesser than alpha 0 0.05. Therefore, we, we say that the sample mean is significantly different from the test value. Okay, so means that there are there is a significant difference in the data set between the uh, current achievement and the histi his, uh, historical achievement. Okay. Yeah. Senang je. Panah lain sikit-sikit je dulu. Okay. Then this one is to report your effect size. Okay. To report the effect size. This is the equation. Okay. D equals to D minus mu divided by, uh, by, uh, divide by various Various and S. Okay. And then, or D equals to T divided by square root of N. So, you can use, you can use either one. Okay. Based on the value ni. Okay. Then, you compare into the table. Okay. The, the cutoff point table given by Cohen. Okay. So, based on the value 1.8, referring to large, large, uh, large effect size. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so next one. In terms of interpreting and reporting the result. Okay, so this is how you can report the result. Okay, so a one sample t-test was conducted to test whether philanthropic behavior is significantly different among Malaysian and Mexican, for example. So data were collected among Malaysian volunteers. The result as indicated in table one, uh, indicated that the sample mean score M equals to 3.86, standard deviation equals to 0 0.48, was significantly higher than mean test score with T, uh, uh, degree of freedom 59 equals to 13.94, uh, 13 significant value lesser than 0 0.000. So the effect size indicated uh, by yeah. Uh, those Mazili, can you turn? Uh, can you use Mazili? Mazili. Mazili. Okay, sorry. Okay, and then the effect size by Consdi was 1.8, indicating a substantially large effect size. Okay, so this is how you can report, uh, sorry, interpret your finding. It's nice, eh? Any questions so far? So, what to number class ni data, data analysis and interpretation? We teach you on how to run the analysis and how to interpret the result, the word work. Okay, so next one is pet sample detail. So in which each subject is measured twice for pest observation. Okay, the application is in case control study or repeated measure design. For example, you have the repeated measure design research design. Okay, so in which in this study for pet sample ni, we, we need to use similar sample for before and after pet sample. Okay. So the purpose of using pet sample t-test is to compare mean difference between two repeated or dependent sample. Repeated or dependent. So it means that the reading for before and after, it is related with one another. Okay. So
So the, re the requirement is for pre-test score, it must be in interval and ratio. And then for post-test score, it must be in interval or ratio. Both must be in interval or ratio. Okay. Okay, so the assumption is the pre-test and post-test scores must be normally distributed. Both must be normally distributed. And then the observations are independent of one another. Okay. And then the dependent variable should not contain any outlier. Okay. It, not, it shouldn't contain uh, uh, any outlier. This one is related to the first assumption. Lah. Okay. It must be normally distributed. Okay. This one, boleh lah julang eh. For again, for t-test, SPSS does not provide option for uh, a one-tail hypothesis test. And then for the two-tail test, simply compare the given significant t or two-tail against alpha to make your decision. For a one-tail test, divide the significant t by two and compare this value against alpha. Okay, so the confidence interval, sama lah eh. This is the option of reporting other than the alpha, the significant value in which we to make this, uh, the decision is based on the location of zero. If the zero located outside the confidence interval, we reject hash naught. If zero located within CI, then we fail to reject hash naught. Okay. So the effect size, we evaluate the degree that the difference deviate from zero in standard deviation unit. Okay, so the unit we use similar, 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 represent small, medium and large effect size. Okay, so this is the equation. Okay, another option for pet sample size that you can report the uh, effect size is eta squared. Okay, so eta squared. So it is an alternative to D. So eta squared range between 0 to 1. Okay, for, uh, for D, for D eh. Uh, the value ranges from negative infinity to positive infinity. But for eta squared, the value range between 0 to 1 only. Is that right? Eh? For eta squared, the value range from 0 to 1. So eta squared value of 0 0.1, 0 0.25 and 0 0.4 represent small, medium and large effect size. Okay, so this is the equation for eta squared. Okay, you can use either one. Okay, so what you need to know, run the analysis in SPSS, identify the required statistic, okay, alpha uh, report, uh, indicate the alpha, decide and present the findings, and lastly, interpret and report your result. Okay, so then, in addition, you may report the confidence interval and effect size. Okay, so to run the analysis for PET sample t-test, I don't think that I have the data uh, on pet sample. Okay, in, uh, in our data set too, we do not have that data. Okay, because uh, if you have the pet, uh, pet, uh, pet sample data ni, you need to have two observation. Okay, this one also considered to be part of longitudinal study lah. Longitudinal. Biasa kita buat cross-sectional. So, I do hope that you can differentiate between cross-sectional and uh, longitudinal study. Boleh beza eh? Okay. Yang tu pandai lidik, pandai atas. Okay, cross-sectional ni ni, cross-sectional ni means that you can, you only do one data collection. Okay, but for longitudinal ni, probably you have few readings. Okay, in your study, you have few readings. For example, uh, the first quarter, second quarter, and last uh, and third quarter. Uh, you have three readings. Few readings, kalau longitudinal ni. Kalau... Uh, cross-sectional, on, you have only one reading of your data in uh, in a study. Okay, so to run the analysis of PET sample t-test in uh, in IBM SPSS, you, you need to have both data for pre and post. Post and pre. Okay, you need to have both. And then click analyze, compare mean, and then click PET sample t-test. Analyze, compare mean, and PET sample t-test. And then after that, once the PET sample t-test box appears, then you just locate Okay, you locate uh, the pre and post ni under the variable 1, variable 2. Okay, for pair 1. Pair 1, okay, then you just locate first the post and then variable 2 pre. Okay, depends on you. You Either you want to locate the first one is pre, then after that post. It depends on the purpose of your study. Eh? If you study, you want to know the increase of certain attribute, 
then you locate the post first. Okay. If you study, you expect an increase in certain attribute, for example, an increase in knowledge after the training, then you locate the, the, uh, this, uh, apa tu, the finding that you expect to have higher value at first, at the first thing, first line. Okay, post and then pre. If you study, you intended to see the decre uh, decremental in certain attribute, for example, uh, the decrease in smoking, uh, the frequency of smoking after attend the training, then you locate the pre first. Okay, so like kita assume kalau orang dulu atas, uh, kalau smokers attend the training, maksudnya awal tu dia memang heavy smoker. Then after attending the training, then probably the, the frequency of uh, smoking tu reduce. Kan? So that kita dapatlah value yang positif. Sebab nanti kita nak tolak ni. Post uh, minus pre. Okay. And then click OK and then so this is the result. Okay, so the first one is the descriptive uh, data for your uh, pet sample. Okay, you have the mean for both group, post and free. Okay, and then the standard deviation and the standard error. Okay, and then this is the pet sample uh, pet sample test findings. Okay, so uh, so the value is this one. Mean similar, standard deviation similar, this one confidence interval, and then this one. Eh? So... The significant uh, value is 0 0.001. Okay, and then your T is 4.882. Okay. Okay, uh, as I mentioned just now, as an alternative, you can also report the confidence interval. So this one. Okay, this one, eh? confidence interval. To, to make decision based on confident uh, confident interval, simply look, uh, simply find the location of zero. Based on this range, eh, lower bound, upper bound. Zero located within or outside? Outside. 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 So, means that we reject, reject the HO. If zero located outside, we reject HO. If zero located within the range, we fail to reject H not. By the way, before I forgot, okay, when you do your uh, hypothesis testing while writing for your research ni, please do not, uh, please do not uh, write that you reject or fail to reject, uh, sorry, please do not write that you accept the research hypothesis. <laughs> okay, because Okay, because the rule is, okay, in any research, the value, the hypothesis that we test is null hypothesis. The hypothesis that we test is null hypothesis. So either reject or fail to reject, it is based on null hypothesis, not on your research hypothesis. Ya, Adi Putera nak cakap apa? No, I mean, uh, alamak dah tertulis dalam tu. Ah, <laughs> so we, we should not... We, we only report or we only write the null hypothesis lah, doctor. You can write both. You can write both research and null hypothesis. But the decision itself, okay, the, because at the end of it, as the conclusion, you will write either you you fail or uh, you fail you fail to reject or uh, you have to reject the null hypothesis, right? When you write uh. your decision. So make sure you write your decision. The basis is the null hypothesis, not on your research hypothesis. Never state that you accept the research hypothesis. Jangan buat you accept. Perkataan accept tu. Because the rule is we only use we reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember that we uh, the hypothesis that we test is the null hypothesis. Not on research hypothesis. Okay? <laughs> Clear eh? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Hey. Okay. So set the alpha. Doctor. I yes. Doctor, if that's the case, uh, if let's say we were to write in our our project paper, we saying that uh, we, we we mentioned about the research hypothesis. Uh -huh. Uh, we do not mention the null hypothesis. So uh, if let's say one of the hypothesis, we say that um, there um positive associations between IV and DV, let's say lah, for example. 
So uh, once we test uh, the result and it's, it's actually uh, sh sure that they actually have the positive uh, relationship association. So if in that case, so we have to report it as there's actually for sure that is a positive association, associations between IV and DV and are uh, being supported by other literatures as well. Is it, do you mean that way? No, no, no. Uh, in terms of elaborating your findings should be no problem. But the statement itself, okay, for example, you present your finding according to the finding, therefore, we fail to reject H0. Uh, that statement, I'm referring to the statement. That after statement means that you want to elaborate further your finding, then you can reflect your uh, research hypothesis. But the first uh, uh, testing though, first statement, Either you it's say, in the de de decision lah, Doctor, eh? Yes, kan sebelum we oh. elaborate, before we elaborate our findings, we come up with the decision dulu, either we we want uh, to reject or fail to reject. That one though, it must be, the basis should be your null hypothesis. Clear? Yeah? Okay, okay, ah, okay. 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 Uh, okay, katakan kita, uh, okay, let's say we, we report our uh, research hypothesis. Mm -hmm. So in the decision, uh, okay, if let's say the, the answer is, to to fail to reject HO. So when 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 do, doing the decision, how can how should we do it? Okay, means that you only state your research hypothesis. Means that there is no null hypothesis in your study or what? Okay. Uh, yeah, no so, HO. Okay. Okay, if you decide on only to write on the null the research hypothesis, so it is actually self-explanatory that your uh, your null hypothesis will against it. But still, even you do not mention the null hypothesis in your study, you still need to infer the decision based on null hypothesis, not research hypothesis. Oh, okay, still, okay. it must be on null hypothesis. It is wrong when you say that we accept the research hypothesis. No. Because again, we test, oh, okay. ah, in statistics, we test the null hypothesis. Not the research hypothesis. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> and then, uh, before I forgot, I just to share with everybody. Since uh, uh, Young uh, did indicated, if let's say this is the hypothesis, there is a positive association between IV and DV. You should be very careful, eh? <laughs> For example, I give you the finding: the significant value equals to. Uh, point zero, right? Uh, zero point z point one, but p uh, significant value equals eh, equals to point one, but r equals to two. Hmm. Okay. There is a, a relationship, a relationship or not? Ah, ada hubungan Based on Guilford rule of thumb, the relationship is there. Is there any relationship based on this finding? Ya, cewa. Ah, ada kita. Macam tak ada sebab maksimum no. satu je kalau the. Okay, tukar. Ah. Okay, tukar lah kat sini. Okay, okay. Point, sorry, sorry, sorry. Tukar. Point kosong dua. Point dua, point dua. Ha, point dua. Tukar ni. Salah ni ada. Oh, nak buat point dua, point dua. Point two. Oh, point eh. Ha. Is there any relationship or not? Ada. Ada. But now you want to, you you want to reject or fail to reject now hypothesis? Ah. Okay. Ah. Ah. Because Reject HO ah. So well, dia ada hype, dia dia ada relationship ah. but uh negligible. Ah. But the result is not significant. So that's why it's quite confusing kalau you ubah macam ni. Faham tak? Unless you indicate there is a significant and positive association. Then, uh, because this one, the positive, ada positive, hubungan positive. Should, should. This one should, means that, okay. Faham tak maksud saya? 
So, add uh -huh. another, term, uh, another term here, significant. There is a significant and positive association. Because sometimes there is other, uh, the finding is not significant, but there is a relationship. By, by, by rule, if you indicate this, then your, apa tu, your uh, research hypothesis is correct. Okay? Aja je lah nak ingat ni eh. Aja je. Okay, so next one. So decide and presenting uh, the result. Okay. Ada table, ada table tak? Ada table dia. Tak, tak. Okay, so this is uh, how to present the table. Okay, for the pet sample t-test, you need to uh, present both. Okay, so the variable pre and post. Okay, so the mean standard deviation t and p value. So this is the table how you how you can use to report your uh, pet sample t-test findings. Okay, so kat sini lah ni tak ni. Okay, so in terms of uh, interpreting uh, the finding, do uh, apa tu to to to, uh, to do your decision? Okay, it, it is similar. Eh? It is based on T and P. Okay, to make your decision referring to the P value, uh, P value, but in terms of reporting, make sure you report both. So in the case just now, since the significant T 0 0.001 lesser lesser than alpha 0 0.01, therefore there is a significant increase in knowledge after the training uh, means that the training is effective to improve ICT knowledge for example okay and then then you can elaborate further by reporting your effect size okay by you just plug in your value into the equation okay and then you will get the 1.56 for the first equation and for the second equation you will get the 1.54 okay so according to the result Okay, so it considered to be large effect size. Okay, so this one, large effect size. Okay. So this is another way if you use the eta square. So the answer is 0.729. Okay. So based on the cut of point, 0.729 also considered to be large effect size. Okay, sama. So this is reporting and then this is how to write in uh, in words. Okay. Okay, so a pet sample t test was conducted to test whether training program can improve participants' knowledge on ICT. Data were collected both before and after the training program among the training participants. So the result indicated in table 2 indicated that the mean post-test score M equals to 15.1, standard deviation equals to 3, was significantly higher than the mean pre-test scores M equals to 12, 0.3 standard division 1.89. Okay, T equals to 4.882. P equals a uh, P lesser than 0 0.001. So the effect size eta squared was 0.726, indicating a substantially large effect size. So the results support the conclusion that the training program was effective to improve students' knowledge on ICT. Okay. Ini cara, for example, you can interpret uh, and uh, apa tu, uh, illustrate your finding lah. Okay. Next one. Macam okay, so senang I... je doktor dia tulis. Ya, yeah, ni saya buat. Dia senang je. Interpretation is very easy. As long as you indicate, you report the right value. But make sure when you report, the mean and standard deviation is always a compulsory. Ni. It is always should be that. Before you report the actual finding. Macam ni je. But uh, the, uh, the way you uh, give meaning to different thing. Uh, itulah ini interpret je, senang je. You just interpret the value. Okay? Uh, ini senang je. Okay. Tak apa tak. Okay, next one, independent sample t-test. Okay. So the purpose uh, and requirement for independent sample sample t-test is the, to compare mean difference to compare mean difference in DV between two independent groups. Okay, so perhaps you collected the data at once. Okay, but in that uh, uh, in that uh, that, uh, uh, in that uh, sample you have two categories. Okay, you have two different groups. Okay, and then the requirement is the DV must be interval or ratio. Okay, meanwhile the IV must be nominal or ordinal in which the number of group must be equals to two okay the number of group must be equals to two it cannot be one it cannot be three only two 
Okay. So the assumption is the score of the DV must be normally distributed for each group of the IV. Okay. And then, uh, oh, ni je requirement dia. Simple je. Okay. Ada lagi satu ni. Lagi satu ni. Equality of variance. Lupa nak masuk ni. Equality of variance. Lagi satu. Okay. The, the assumption, uh, there are two. First, must be normally distributed. And second one is, must uh, must fulfill the equality of variance. Okay, so the formula selection is if the significant F larger than alpha, okay, then we use the equal variance formula. Okay, if the significant F lesser than or equals to alpha, we use the, we report the unequal variance formula. Okay, significant F larger than alpha equal. Okay, so ni sama, 40 test, SPSS does not provide option for one tail hypothesis test. For the two tail test, simply compare the given significant T against alpha to make your decision. For one, one tail test, divide the significant T by two and compare this value against alpha. Okay, so the confidence interval okay, can also be used to test the hypothesis and then calculation is based on mean difference, critical T and standard error for the difference. Okay, line sikit lah. Okay, laju. Okay, so the effect size provide a measure of size of the difference between the two group. Okay, so the effect size ni actually they give you other than you just report that there is a significant difference. But the effect size ni will give you a better understanding on how much the difference. Ah, itu maksud dia. Effect size ni. Okay, based on the significant value, value we know that there is a differences between group A and group B. But effect size will give you uh, further information which is how much the difference? How much is the difference between group A and group B? Okay. Next one. Okay, so this statistic evaluates the degree that uh, that the difference score deviate from zero in standard deviation unit. So we use 0 0.2, 0 0.5 and 0 0.8 to represent small, medium and large effect size. Okay, and then the formula. Okay. Okay, so the first the first one we use uh, when uh, when equal variance assume and then the second equation we use when equal variance not assume okay so another option is you can use the eta square so in in which eta square range from zero to one okay so the proportion of the test variable that is a function of the group variable so eta square values of 0 0.1 0 0.25 and 0 0.4 represent small medium and large effect size so the formula uh, panjang. Tak agak nak sebut. Okay. Okay, so the first formula we use when equal variance assume, the second formula we use when equal variance not assume. The variance is not is not equal lah. Okay, how what you need to know, the first one need to run the analysis in SPSS, identify the required statistic, determine the alpha, decide and present and lastly interpret and report. Okay, you can also uh, report the confidence interval and effect size. Okay. So run to run the analysis. Uh. This one kita boleh buat. Okay, this one boleh buat. Okay, are you ready? Okay, click analyze, click compare mean and then click independent sample t-test. Analyze, compare mean, independent sample t-test. Okay. And then after the box appear, do you locate your DV under the test variable? Locate your DV under the test variable. Okay, and then for the grouping variable, you locate gender. Okay, for grouping variable, locate gender. And then you click define group. Click define group. Okay, for under the define group, you just just in enter uh, the number again, one and two. So then you need to know lah one referring to which gender, male or female. Okay, so the coding is should be in your mind already. Okay. And then click continue. Okay, and then uh, under option, okay, you insert the 95%, 95% confidence interval. Insert 95 Okay, and then click continue and then click OK. So this is the finding. You get it? Manage to get it? Yes, okay. Doctor. Okay. Yes. Okay. 
Okay, so the first one, the group statistic will represent the descriptive of your data. So, and uh, the, uh, the number of sample according to the group, mean based on group, standard deviation, and standard uh, standard error. Okay, so first, based on the finding, ni, okay, you can see the first column is Levin test for equality of variance. So, F equals to 3, uh, 13.905 and the significant value is 0 0.000. So this one, okay, so means that it met the equality of variance or not? Huh. Huh. Resumption of equality of variance. Assalamualaikum. Ah, eh. Huh? Mana? Hey, ya Allah. Kau dah kat bazar Ramadan dah. Ini ni. Ha, ni dia punya formula ni. Oh, tak mik lah doktor. Ha, tak mik lah. Tak mik. Ha, tak mik. Apa dia 0.5 kan doktor? Ya, yeah, alpha dia 0.001. Tak mik lah. Dia dia unequal value. 00. Ha. Ha, one. Okey okey. Tak mik. So Bila, when it is do, does not make the assumption of equality of variance, it will determine which value that we should report. If you aware, there are two values here. Ni. Then, ni. So, before you decide which value to be reported, first you need to check here. Okay. If the, if the significant value, significant F lesser than alpha means that it do not meet the, un, uh, means that the variance is unequal. Means that you need to report the unequal variance lah. Okay, unequal ni, 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 ni. Uh, if the significant value larger than alpha 0.05, then means that your data meet the assumption of equal variance. Then you report the first one ni, the first ni. Okay, but in this case, since the significant value, uh, significant F, lesser than alpha 0.05, therefore, we need to report the equal variance not SU. Means, means that not equal lah ni. Okay, dia terbalikkan saja nak bagi you all confused. Okay, so report this one. So report the T this one. You need to check the T, the T value based on the second values. Okay, this row. Okay, so report the T equals to negative 7.153, degree of freedom 44.926, significant value 0 0.000, mean difference, and, uh, ni, and then this one. Okay, so based on the confidence interval, the location of zero also located outside, so the data considered to be significantly different. Okay. Okay, um, okay, 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 so any question? Yeah, okay, okay, then you set your alpha, okay, decide and presenting result, okay, so seeing the significant F, uh, lesser than alpha 0 0.05, so we use equal variance, not assume result, okay, so then, Next one, you uh, you check on the T. So, see the significant T, 0 0.000, lesser than alpha 0 0.05. So, there is a significant difference in philanthropic behavior among male and female respondent. Ada beza. There is a significant difference. Okay. And then, calculate your effect size. Okay. Based on the formula. Okay, so since our second, our uh, our data set is based on unequal variance, so we use the unequal variance formula. So we just plug in the value into the equation, then we get the negative 1.847 based on D, Cohen's D. Okay, based on Cohen's D, we use the second formula, we get the negative 1.847. So based on this one, the difference also considered to be large. 
Okay, so now again, latch. Okay, next one. If, if uh, you use the eta square, we, we also use the second formula. Okay, then after you plug in the equation into the formula, you will get the 7.486. So again, eh, the value for eta square always be positive. Okay. Okay, so the eta square is 0.4. Uh, since the value is larger than 0.4, then it's considered to be large effect size. So similar. So in terms of reporting the result in table, so this is how it looks like. Okay, so you present the heading, table 3, result of independent sample t-test on philanthropic behavior by gender. You report uh, the, uh, the variable the according to the gender, the number of sample according to the group, mean, standard deviation, T and P. Okay, so this is the APA representation. Okay, so an independent sample t-test was employed to test the difference in philanthropic behavior scores between male and female students. Sorry, volunteers ni. Okay, so as depicted from table 3, there was significant mean difference. T, uh, degree of freedom 44.926, okay, equals to uh, negative 7.153, significant value equals to 0 0.00. And then mean philanthropic behavior score for female students, M equals to 4.179, standard division equals to 0 0.2434, was slightly higher then mean for male student and mean equals to 3.533 standard deviation 0 0.237. So the effect size by using eta squared was uh, 7.486, okay, indicating a large effect size. So the results support the conclusion that stress, I'm going to ni, bawah ni, uh, sorry, degree, uh, apa tu, uh, ni, uh, philanthropic behavior score between two students were significantly different. Just get Okay. okay, so any questions so far? Leh? Habis dah untuk topik ni. Any questions so far? Tak ada. Ada. Okay, so shall we proceed to the next topic? Boleh? Dah habis nota, Doktor. Apa dia? Nota dah habis. Nota dah. Saya <laughs> pun <laughs> juga nota. Ah, doktor belum share nota yang terkini, oh, yeah. yang week 8 yeah. and seterusnya. Yelah, sebab kita dah terlaju, terlebih laju. Hmm. Okay, uh, nak continue ke atau nak next week je? Terlebih laju. Tu next, next week. week. Uh. Next week eh? Oh, okay, 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 okay. Next week. Next week pun boleh. Tak tak tak. Assignment, Doctor. Uh, regarding the assignment, okay, uh, that one I shared, uh, the EDA, right? The one is EDA. Okay, so again eh, you just share your drop box. Okay, share your drop box by using your metric number. Okay, and then uh, after you do the assignment, then just submit within your Dropbox. Itu saja. Okay, yang saya senang juga. Uh, but, but, but basically, uh, saya tak adalah untuk to, to complete, uh, dah, dah, dah tanya tu ada uh, deadline ni. Huh? Basically, I give you a week uh, to complete the assignment. Tapi ramai terlebih week-weeknya. Okay, so uh, 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 I recommend you to submit the, the assignment within a week. Okay, but there will be no mark deduction if you uh, lambat, if you late to, uh, for you for late submission, there will be no mark deduction. Okay, malah lah nak, nak deduct mark ni. Dah tua-tua dah semua lah. <laughs> malah lah nak deduct mark. Okay, so I give you one week lah. One week uh, for, uh, for to submit the assignment. For the first assignment. Okay, so any other question? Okay, eh? so we stop here lah. Next week, we will continue with ANOVA. I will share. <laughs> okay, I will share the recording. Hari ni juga lah. Mohon uh, doktor untuk share. Okay, okay, okay. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Recording akan di share. Boleh, Thank boleh. Thank you so much, doktor. Okay. Thank you, doktor. Um, so, okay. There, if there is no more questions, Thank so we stop you. here. Selamat berbuka for all the Muslim. Okay, so for, uh, for others, please take care. Let's see you next week. Okay, so bye. Assalamualaikum.
Thank you, Doctor. Bye, Doctor. Bye, Doctor. Before I forget, please don't, uh, don't forget to mark your attendance through Putra Blas. Dah. Ah, okay, okay. Lupa, lupa. Okay, thank you, thank you. Okay, bye. Bye, Doctor. Bye, Doctor.